Hello, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be assembling and painting a military miniatures tent set from Tamiya. And this is in 1 in 35 scale. It's a fairly basic set featuring a tent and a radio operator. So I figured I'd make a small diorama out of this. I have no idea what nationality or what army this is supposed to represent. The only thing that I know for sure is that it's World War II era. And judging by the colours used on the box art, I'm guessing it's set for a warmer climate. But first things first, let's check out the sprues. There are two in total. There are only a handful of parts, and a couple of these are either duplicates or alternative options. Alright, it's time to get them all cut out and laid out so we can see what we have to work with. So we have a spare antennae for the radio, and we have the option to have the temp either partly open or fully open. I'm using model cement to glue all this together, as this basically welds the joints. The tent is the tricky part to assemble, in part because of its size, and also because you don't have any stability until the fourth piece is on. All the other parts assemble much easily, mostly because there are two pieces. The radio operator comes in four pieces, but it's just a matter of making sure that his body and his arms are in alignment with the radio set. And once you've checked that, you've got nothing else to worry about. Where possible, I like to keep my pieces separate for painting purposes, and then complete final assembly once that's done. The antenna is supposed to be placed on top of the radio, but if I glue it on there as it is, it will just fall off. So using my tiny drill, I drill a hole in the top of the radio box, and then add a little drop of glue and push the antenna into the hole. And now I know it's stable, I know it's not going to drop off. And there is a spare antenna in the kit in case you break this one. For the base I'm going to use some PVC foam board. I've already cut it to size so I just need to remove the backing. And now I just need to work out what can be placed where. And once I've done that I mark the position with the pencil. There's quite a bit of free space left on the board. So later on I'm going to go through my accessories kit and see what else I can put on. So that I can further expand upon the scene. There's some gaps to fill in on the tent, so for that I use some Tamiya putty, and this can be easily brushed into the gap with a wet finger. This stuff only takes a few minutes to dry, and then it can be sanded smooth. So a sanding sticks are ideal for this. I should have more flexibility over something like standard sandpaper. I want the bed to look a little bit uneven like regular ground, so I soften it up with a heat gun and start adding in a few bumps. This won't make a huge difference, but every little helps. Now I've done the base paint for the board, starting off with some black edging, and following on from that, I dab on a sandy colour for the undercoat on the surface. Next, I spray on a grey primer for all the other parts. The box art shows some wires connecting the operator to the radio. These do not come complete with the kit, but I feel that it needs at least one wire to connect them together. So I drill a hole. The wire will be added after painting and assembly. Everything is painted in variants of sandy colours, as they're supposed to blend in with desert terrain. I do vary the colours slightly so everything doesn't disappear into the terrain. Thankfully the radio has a lot of switches, buttons and dials, and this allows me to use some brown, black, white and silver. Painting the radio operator is fairly quick. It's just a matter of putting on the flesh tone, followed by the flesh wash, then the uniform colour, and that's 90% of it done. In order to make the tent look weathered, I give it a white dry brush, and I follow that up with a diluted brown wash. And this combination creates the illusion of sun and water damage. I didn't want the ground to be smooth and boring, so I used the Vallejo ground texture. I dabbed it on with my finger at first, before moving on to an old bush and spreading it around. The only problem with this is it takes about 24 hours to dry. But while it's wet, it's a good time to put things in place, as it will be harder to get some of these items to fit once it's dried. So once I put this to one side to dry, I get to work on some additional accessories from some other kits, and I get them painted up. That includes a rolled up sleeping mat, a knife, an ammo crate with some grenades, and a couple of bottles. 
Now that the beds had time to dry, I give it an overbrush with a sandy colour, and that followed up with some desert weathering powder. Now the look I'm going for is dried desert mud. To hold that weathering powder in place, I need to give it a spray with some matte varnish, and this will also allow me to glue things to the base. Next up is to add on that fine wire for the radio. I add it on a bead of glue and push it into the hole that I drilled earlier. And I repeat the same process for the microphone in the operator's hand. I can now add some super glue to all the contact points and secure them into this final place. I just need to make sure I line them up correctly. As any mistakes at this stage will be a pain in the bum to fix. All the other items are also glued into place. And there's also enough space on the board to do wish to expand with other characters. But for now at least, that's this little diorama finished. And we can check out the 360 on the turntable. Now once again, this is a 1 in 35 scale Tamiya kit and it was made in the Philippines. It was nice and cheap too, as it only cost me $5.99. Because as you probably already know, model kits can get very expensive. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, if I can do it, so can you.